So here we go. I want to show you how you can record uh, Ultra Beat uh, within Logic Pro, but uh, more, more important, any other sort of virtual drum machine. So first of all, you put in Ultra Beat, you can listen to it, here it is. And recording is it is quite easy. You don't have to, because down here, that's very, very small button, depending on the mon your monitor, drag to arrange window. So I can just drag it up here and you got the MIDI data. You can uh, also manipulate uh, this whole thing as you can do with MIDI, as you know. Uh, and if you want to have this uh, whole thing as a um, drum loop, uh, you just go into bouncing region at the same position and uh, then it's bouncing it and you got an audio file. So you can listen to the audio file here. This is the audio file, sorry. and and uh, the other one is uh, this MIDI file coming from drag and drop up here. So this is easy, probably most of you know this, but uh, then you uh, think further and, and think, well, I've got Reactor 6, for example, or a virtual drum machine, and how can I record that? Yes, uh, so I, I'm going to change uh, the Ultra Beat now in here and in, in within this channel strip within Native Instruments Reactor 6. Go in here. Uh, by the way, um, I don't need that here anymore. I will delete it. So, and here's Limelight. And Limelight is quite interesting. Something like that. Let's, let's take that for example, yes? Uh, how do, do I record it? Uh, so, first of all, uh, you have to put in a, um, a new channel in here. Yes, new aux channel strip. Now it's here. <clears throat> and uh, within uh, the sense of the uh, limelight channel here, the reactor channel, uh, not the output, within the sense you say, I go to bus one. And bus one should be the input of this uh, channel strip. So R. Davis is going uh, into the aux one here. And of course you have to put, not forget to put up here the volume this place here yes and here it is so but how do i get uh, this running within here so i create a new audio channel okay here it is and this output of the augs here should be a different bus than the bus it's running in here let's say bus two and this bus two is then gonna be the audio channel from AUX1 into bus 2 here. So, and it's gotta be stereo, of course. So, what you see now is that you don't have uh, anything coming in here, but you have if you record it, yes? This is crazy, but let's have a look what's happening now. You one, two, three, four. You see, it's recording it. And while it's recording, I can change uh, the sounds here. It's all a question of these buses. Bus 1 is going into the aux, is the input of aux 1. Bus 1 must be, the volume must be up. Then you have a different audio track and you see the output of uh, bus, uh, of the auxiliary bus here is bus 2 and bus 2 is the input of the uh, audio and this is recorded up here. There's no other way to do this because you don't have this drag and drop, drop thing here. The good message is you can uh, use any sort of external groove box w without uh, using the logic one uh, by this and make wonderful loops and sample the loops and then transfer them to MPC or whatever you want to do. Uh, so this is quite nice and uh, even nicer because uh, you then in the aux channel uh, can put in an insert like uh, um, a verb or, or a delay and also record that. Uh, or even do a different aux and uh, a scent effect within this aux. So there's many opportunities to do that and I hope it's helpful because many people don't understand this routing. Within Cubase it's quite easy. Uh, uh, I've I made a video on a recording loop mesh within Cubase. You just, just put the output of uh, uh, loop mesh as the input of uh, any audio track and record it. So this is a little bit more complicated, but also very nice because you can use the sense then here and it's more flexible in a way. Okay, thanks.